Hi and welcome back to another episode and today the used car conveyor belt brings us a BMW Z4. So this particular car has been sat for some time before it's been part exchanged and because of that things have started to grow on it. As we look at the petrol flap I think if we left this just a little bit longer there'll be enough compost in there to sort of uh, well, maybe grow some carrots or some cabbages. And the story continues around the whole of the car really. Anywhere there's a fine gap between two door mouldings or rubber seal or stuff, it's just absolutely caked in green moss, lichen, mould, etc. And all this has got to come off because it looks absolutely disgusting. By far the most challenging part of this wash is going to be doing the roof on the car because it's got a fabric roof or mohair as some people call them and it's absolutely full of the stuff. To be fair, I think if the previous owner had left it about another six months, it probably would have matched the bodywork of the car and you probably would have noticed so much. And on the right hand side of the roof here, we can see these lines. This is where somebody's tried to pressure wash it in the past with almost like the jet on like a needle point. And it can really damage this kind of roof. You really shouldn't do that. And it's going to be a bit of a troublesome sort of area to try and rectify. In the engine bay, we've got a load of dust obviously here and we've got a compost heap to the left and there's a matching one on the right of the engine bay as well. So all this dust and vegetation, this uh, six cylinder engine doesn't look very sporty. So we're gonna get in here and give it a good deep clean, remove all that and make it look fantastic once more. Hmm, nice wheels. So these are aftermarket, they're not BMW originals, and the polished face on them has gone quite bad. They sort of started to blister and flake off. So we'll be removing those today so they can be refurbished, and we'll also be painting the caliper behind and the hub as well, because that's gone a bit corroded and could do with smartening up a bit. And for people with a keen eye, you'll notice on the driver's seat here at the base, it's got two gold patches, and that's either from either fake tan or bronzer, and it's actually rubbed off somebody's legs over the years and stuck to the seat. So we're going to have to get that off today as well. So we're going to start on the petrol flap, we've pre-treated with APC and now I'm going to go over with a brush and agitate it. And then I'm going to spray a bit more APC in it to flush the muck out which you can see on the video, yeah, loads of that coming out. Work it a bit more with the brush and also the actual outside of the petrol flap as well and then we're going to flush all that out with the jet wash. And for all these areas we're going to be seeing, um, we're just using an interior brush which is a bit worn out and it's ideal for this sort of wash process, rather rubber seals or door trims or just around any of the paintwork. So with the petrol flap all washed out and looking smart, we can now walk around to those window seals and start getting rid of all that mould. Now the tricky area is actually going to be right at the edge of the window frame where it meets the mirror because that's a real hot spot for sort of trapping it and immediately under the mirror as well. It's a simple place, just applying all-purpose cleaner maybe a couple of times and just really getting in there with the brush and giving it a good go over. And I tend to, as you can see on camera, just flush it out a little bit sometimes some all-purpose cleaner. Let that settle in a bit more to sort of work its magic eat into the dirt as it were and then come back and flush it all out with the gel wash. I'm going to be honest, even editing this now and watching the footage back, it's quite satisfying to watch all that green filth just get blasted off the side of this car. And because there was so much on it, I think this car took me about two and a half, three hours to wash and it was quite a lengthy process but even at the end of the wash process you looked at it and thought wow that's really transformed that and it just looks a lot better. And this seems like a good opportunity to try and plug the channel. If you're new and you haven't been here before, uh, I only work for the motor trade, which means I just deal with part exchange cars from dealers and auctions. Thus meaning I have endless amounts of content and most of them are pretty filthy because that's what I deal with. So it's well worth the sub. And also a massive thank you to everybody who has subscribed. Uh, the last uh, episode I did, I think we were just under a thousand subscribers and now we're at 1,300 so it's jumped really really quickly and I really appreciate that so thanks very much for the people who have subscribed and continue to follow the channel. It's actually got to the stage now where I'm in the process of looking at better camera equipment because when I started this channel I'm gonna be honest it's on a shoestring you've probably guessed that already though and I'm currently using a GoPro 7 to film everything and I agree a GoPro isn't the best camera to film with but it, when I was learning and the fact that I've dropped it probably about a thousand times already covered it in water and generally abused it, it's been a real trooper and I can't knock it. So the cameras I'm looking at are all 4K. Uh, the idea is also by having two or three I can film different angles of the same scene to give a different perspective which would be quite good as well. Also a lot of you asking about social media, I am on it, I'm hoping again within sort of maybe the six weeks I can really get the sort of grips with that. I've not really done that before um, so it's something 
that's important. I realise that, but I need to sort of work out how it all works and then uh, move forward from that as well. So moving on to the engine bay, I'm going to use the APC and then scrub it with the same brush and just rinse it off. I do protect the electrics and I have a special dressing that I use at the end. I'm going to put a link at the top because uh, I do a dedicated compilation uh, of how engines are cleaned, what I look for and why and how it's all done. So it's probably, if you're really interested in that aspect of it, go and have a look at that and it'll give you a full perspective of what I'm looking for when I'm doing an engine bay and how I protect it as best I can. So with the engine bay dress we can move on to that troublesome roof. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to pre-treat it with all-purpose cleaner in a lot slightly larger spray as we can see here because it's a bigger area and then I'm going to agitate this with a nail brush because it's a little bit stiffer and it's going to help loosen that off. So although you're never going to see this on camera, this fabric roof's almost got like a pattern or probably the best description would be like grain on a piece of wood. So it's important to go with the grain and opposite to it to try and remove as much of the green stuff as we possibly can. And also when we're rinsing it off we don't want to make the same mistake the other person did by going too close and risk damaging it. So I've got the fan on the jet wash on a very wide arc as we can see here. And God, there's a lot of stuff coming off that. And it's important not to get too close because we don't want to damage it in any way, shape or form. This roof was washed probably three or four times to try and get rid of all of it. And as we're about to see in the next bit of footage, I've left the roof for a day just to dry out to see if there's any bits we miss, which I have and also to see how that bit of damage has come out. As you can see here, it was mainly in the green goop. So if we give this another good scrub, that should remove it and it won't be noticeable. And now with the car in the workshop, I can remove the wheels. Uh, another little top tip here, when removing alloy wheels, you can find sometimes if it's obviously it's bolted to a steel hub, they corrode and they get a bit stuck, which we're about to see. So what I'm gonna do is put one of the wheel bolts back in, about 80%, and then we're gonna around the back of the wheel with a rubber mallet, I'm just going to gently tap the tyre to loosen the wheel off. The reason we put the wheel bolt back in is we don't want to tap it the hammer and the wheel just come flying off the front. So the bolt's just going to hold it there until I want to remove it, as we're about to see. So one thing people tend to forget with convertibles is the fact that obviously they've got the roof down quite a lot. Um, the dust they get inside is absolutely phenomenal. And as we see on this back trim here, this is actually behind the seats. If I rub my hand up and down here with a fresh glove on, 
The amount of dust that's stuck to it is, is really quite heavy. It's actually discolored all the plastics. It's been on there a really, really long time, so we're gonna have to scrub all that off. And we can see here around the dials just how much dust and filth built up. And also on the, the control arm of the wiper arm, the indicator stalk, there's quite heavy buildup of makeup as well. And this happens when people naturally touch their face and then touch the service control. So things like the steering wheel, gear stick, handbrake, uh, obviously the wiper arms, door handles, and also another place will be the edge of the seat when they're sort of sliding in and out of the car as well. We get to see now close up the area I was talking about earlier, which was the fake tan stroke bronzer. And the fact there's almost a cutoff line where somebody's obviously wore shorts or had a skirt on. And at this angle, you can see it even better. So this is built up over a long period of time and it's actually not too bad to remove. And I'm gonna show you how you do it. So we're gonna cover this seat with APC and then use the brush to agitate it quite a bit. And the brush is really good as well because it's gonna get into all these little tight grooves and push all the dirt out of there. I'm then gonna use something that's called a magic sponge. It's extremely important you're very careful when using one of these on leather because they are a micro abrasive. So if you were to rub away for hours, it will eventually damage the seat and potentially take the color out. But if we're careful and just give it a gentle rub over here, it's just gonna help pull the filth off the top layer of the leather and also remove that sort of fake tan bronzer stuff out of it as well. So once I'm satisfied the seat's clean, I'm gonna introduce the airline. It's gonna do two things. Number one, it's gonna dry the seat so I can inspect it and make sure that all that fake tan's gone. And secondly, by running the airline down the seams in the seat, we can remove the water and the APC out of there and also it'll remove the fine sort of grains of sand and dust that you just can't get out with the brush and the cloth. So once the dashboard's dried, I've gone over with the Autoclaim Super Sheen. It leaves a nice satin finish on the dashboard. It's not too shiny in, in your face and it's not slimy in any way, shape or form. And it just gives a good finish. Areas that are a little bit more tighter, for example, like an air vent where you just can't get in between those little, like obviously the vents of it. I've just used a bit of spray silicon around there just to sort of get in those really awkward spaces and then just rubbed it over with a cloth. Now this car's got a value in the UK of about 3,000 pounds. So that's about 3,700 US dollars. So because of that, we're on a bit of a budget. It's gonna receive a single stage polish. And the idea of this is to remove any contaminants on top of the paint. It's gonna take some light scratching and uh, sort of swirls and marring out of the paint and just give it a nice deep gloss again. It's by no means a, a full correction or anything like that. It's an improvement. And that's the whole idea in the tray. We're just trying to improve the whole car in general to make it look presentable. So when it's put up for sale, it looks nice. For this process, I'm using a Roops Miele polisher. It's a dual action, so it oscillates as well as rotates. I've used this in conjunction with a Chemical Guys cutting pad. I tend to find their cutting pads are a little bit softer than some of the other makes. Uh, I really like them. I think they're very, very effective. And pairing this with uh, Kosh Chemie H9 compound, it just gives a really good finish. All three work well together for me, and it's almost like a one pass wonder. You can manage to get a lot of defects out very quickly. And lowering it down, it's ready to go outside so we can have a look at all that hard work and see how it's turned out. The car was polished with uh, a colonite, which is an American uh, hard paste wax. Uh, I've mentioned it before in my videos. It's really cost effective and really hard wearing. So if this vehicle is on the uh, forecourt for a little while, maybe three, four months, it'll still hold a good shine and it's pretty weather resistant as well. And we can see here the level of gloss that we put back into the paintwork. We've got some nice reflections here and it really looks the part. It looks so much different than it did earlier on. So I lost count about how many times I scrubbed this roof, but it's come up really well. And those marks that we saw earlier where somebody had jet washed it have pretty much disappeared, which is fantastic. All the mold and lichen's gone. And for a car that's 16 years old, this roof really is in very good condition underneath all that moss and goop. I'm actually really happy how it's turned out. And likewise, areas like this fuel flat, which were absolutely filthy, the seams down the side by the indicator and the front wing, that's all being cleaned out. It looks really, really good. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the door and show you the shut or the door jam as you would call it in America. And all inside there, the rubbers have been treated, the metalwork's been polished, even up to around where the hinges are, etc. That's all come up really well. And the engine finally looks like the sports car it should do. 
These cars have such a massive engine bay because of the front end so big and the bonnet. It's sort of the focal point. And if you open the bonnet and it's covered in dust and goop like it was, it just sort of is a bit of an anti-climax. Whereas now it looks the part and how it should do. And as we move on to the wheels on the car, it's like the roof, it's one of the most important changes. The polished face ones looked awful. They're now just in a stock silver color. The callip has been painted behind as we can see and also the hub was painted black so it really finishes the car off. The interior has come up really well. There is some wear still on the leather seats and a few of the trims etc and some of the kick plates. But again it's done 87,000 miles and it is 16 years old. It's entitled to have a few little marks here and there due to its age really. So coming up in the next couple of episodes, you'll see a sample of these next. We've got an engine compilation video that's got a van and a couple of cars in it, which are quite grubby. And we've also got a BMW 1 series. Uh, I think on the top of my head it was about, again, a 2005. It's done about 100,000 miles. And it's just, it's had a life. It's pretty grubby. It's trashed down the sides, lots of scratches and things. The wheels are dirty, engine bay's filthy. So it's a good all-rounder video. We can show a lot of things being changed and it being spruced up for sale. As always, thanks for watching it. Uh, really appreciate the support. And I look forward to seeing you in the next few days when I upload the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.